I am attorney Marie Chris Batan Lasco. This is my virtual classroom. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, we shall aim to simplify the law. We shall explain concepts and principles of law in under 10 minutes. In this video, I would like to talk about damages and the grounds for liability for damages. Now, you must have already heard this term. You also hear people using such term like, I will sue you for damages. You breached the contract and so you are liable for damages. What then do we mean by damages? When you go over your civil code, you actually do not see there the definition of damages. What you do see is an enumeration of the different types of damages. But of course, we have to know first what damages are. How do we define it? The Supreme Court defined the term damages in MEA Builders Incorporated versus Court of Appeals. You can check that out. That's GR number 121484, January 31, 2005. The Supreme Court defined damages as the sum of money which the law awards or imposes as a pecuniary compensation, a recompense, or satisfaction for an injury done or a wrong sustained as a consequence either of a breach of a contractual obligation or a tortuous act. In simple terms, therefore, damages is the amount of money that is being awarded to another person because he suffered injury or that there was a wrong done committed to him by another person. And what is this wrong done? It could be because of a contractual obligation or because of an act that he has done that caused damage to that other person. So what then are the grounds for liability for damages under your civil code? There are several. But let's zero in in Article 1170. Article 1170 says that those who in the performance of their obligations are guilty of fraud, negligence, or delay, and those who in any manner contravene the tenor thereof are liable for damages. As I've mentioned, this is just some of the grounds for liability for damages when you go over your civil code. But let's just concentrate on this article for this video. In 1170, one of the grounds for liability for damages is delay. What is delay? Delay is the failure to fulfill an obligation at the time agreed upon after a demand was made. So, if you have promised to fulfill an obligation on, let's say, October 25, 2021, and October 25, 2021 has arrived, you did not fulfill that obligation. And there was also a demand already made upon you to fulfill it, and still, you did not fulfill that obligation there is already delay or more correctly termed as legal delay. If you have already incurred legal delay, then you may be liable for damages. If you promise to pay 100,000 pesos on October 25, 2021, the person you promised to already made a demand upon you on that date. And still, you did not pay. One week has passed and still you did not pay. The period has arrived. The period that you promised to pay has arrived. A demand was also already made. And still you did not pay. This time you will now be liable for damages. If there was no demand yet, as a general rule, you are not liable for damages. 
what are the requisites there for before one can say that there is legal delay. Here are the requisites. First, the failure of the debtor to fulfill his obligation. Second, there was already a demand that was made by the obligee or the person who has the right to demand that it be made. Third is the failure to comply with such demand. These are the three requisites for one to say that there is legal delay. If there is already legal delay, then you will be liable for damages. One of the requisites is demand. How is demand made? The law says under Article 1169 that the demand may be made judicially or extrajudicially. In other words, if the obligee files a case in court, that is judicial demand. An example of extrajudicial demand is when the obligee gives a demand letter personally or through a legal representative upon the obligor to comply or to, feel, to fulfill his obligation. Is it all the time that for you to incur delay, there must be a demand that is made? Not all the time. Why? Because the law provides for exceptions. What are these exceptions? You find that still under 1169. 1169 says that the demand by the creditor shall not be necessary in order the delay may exist under these following circumstances. First, when the obligation or the law expressly so declare, or second, when from the nature and the circumstances of the obligation, it appears that the designation of the time when the thing is to be delivered or the services is to be rendered was a controlling motive for the establishment of the contract, or when demand would be useless as when the obliger has rendered it beyond his power to perform. Let's talk about these three exceptions very simply. The first exception says, when the obligation or the law expressly so declares. This actually gives you two exceptions. When the obligation or the contract expressly so declares and also when the law so declares. An example of such is when in the contract itself, the parties have agreed that there is no need for a demand. So it is written there on clear and plain terms that either party will be liable for damages for delay even without a demand. How about that other, other exception when the law so declares? Let me give you an example. Your taxes. In your tax code, it already gives you a deadline for the payment of different types of taxes. The law also will tell you that your BIR, your Bureau of Internal Revenue, need not make a demand upon you for you to pay such taxes so that you will be made liable for penalties or for interests for delay. This is an example for when the law so declares. You, did not, you need not be demanded by the BIR to pay to incur a delay. If the deadline arrives and you do not pay your taxes, then you will have to be liable for payment of penalties and interests. Another exception to the general rule on no demand, no legal delay, is when time is of the essence. The usual example for this is ordering a wedding cake for a wedding. The cake supplier will incur delay if that cake supplier will not deliver the wedding cake on the day that was agreed upon, even without demand from the one who ordered the cake. Why? Because time is of the essence. The cake supplier cannot excuse herself from liability for damages by saying that there was no demand made when she was already told as to when the cake must be delivered. Because again, time is of the essence. Another exception is when demand would be useless as when the debtor or obliger has rendered it beyond his power to perform. 
impliedly, it will tell you that there may be bad faith. For example, a debtor, A, promised to deliver a particular car to B on October 10, 2021. But prior to October 10, 2021, A intentionally wrecked that particular car. And now this car is totally wrecked. Because such car, particular car, is totally wrecked, A can no longer deliver it on October 10, 2021. So even if B will make a demand upon A, clearly A has rendered it beyond his power to perform. So demand already would be useless. So even if B will not make a demand upon A, since A cannot anymore comply because of his own doing, A will still be liable for damages on account of delay. Another ground for liability for damages under Article 1170 is fraud. What is fraud? Fraud is committed when one of the parties would use words or machinations to induce the other party to enter into a contract. And without such words or machinations, the other party would not have entered into it. For example, A convinces B to buy a ring from him. And A lures B to do so by telling him that the ring that he is selling is a true and genuine diamond ring when in fact the ring that he has shown is actually a fake diamond ring his words or machinations have lured the other party to enter into a contract with him had that other party known that those words were not true those assurances were not true then he would not have entered into such contract this is a ground for liability for damages. Can the parties agree to waive future fraud? The answer is no. That is Article 1171. 1171 provides, Responsibility arising from fraud is demandable in all obligations, any waiver of an action for future fraud is void. In fraud, there is intentional deceit. And therefore, the law will not tolerate future fraud. That's why it disallows an agreement between the parties to waive future fraud that is committed. Article 1170 also gives us another ground for liability for damages. And that is negligence. What is negligence? Negligence is actually a voluntary and deliberate act by one party that causes damage to another. The damage, however, is unintentional. But the action that caused the damage is voluntary and deliberate. Now let me give you an example to better understand that. For example, you are driving your car, and because you had a very bad day, you drove your car recklessly. You driving the car recklessly is a voluntary and a deliberate act. And because you were driving the car recklessly, you hit another car. While you were driving, you never really thought about hitting another car. It was only that you were having a bad day and you made your bad day turn into you driving your car recklessly. But unfortunately, you hit a car which caused damage to that other car. The damage that you caused was actually not intentional, but your driving recklessly was deliberate and intentional it was voluntary but you just never really thought about damaging another person's car this is an example of negligence and this is a ground for liability for 
damages. How do you know then that you are negligent? Is there a standard yardstick to say that you have committed negligence? To determine if negligence was committed, you will have to answer this question. Would a prudent man in that same situation do the same thing as what you have done under the same set of circumstances? If the answer is yes, then you exercised that degree of diligence required under the circumstances. However, if the answer is no, then you are considered negligent and you will be made liable for damages. And lastly, another ground for liability for damages under your Article 1170 is when there is contravention in the terms of the agreement or simply breach of contract. So if there was an agreement, let's say, between you and a painter to paint your house red, but then instead of painting it red, there, the, your house is painted black, this is in contravention to the terms of the agreement, then the painter can be made liable for damages. That is it for today's video on damages and the grounds for liability for damages. See you next time in MBL Classroom. If you have learned anything from this video, please feel free to click like and subscribe. If there is any other principle or concept of law which you would want me to discuss in this channel, please put them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. See you next time in MBL Classroom.